Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Titan Quest 2. Gotta start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a, um, a look on your Radian and NVIDIA settings. Also, we're going to make sure that you're using the latest version of DLSS 4, and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings, and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then uh, with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. For NVIDIA, so first of all, go to your Titan Quest 2. Um, in the DLSS override over there, make sure that you're using the latest one and apply. Right now I can do it because it's already apply. You're going to make sure that NVIDIA will always push the latest version of DLSS so you don't have to wait on the developer. So you will have always the DLSS 4 version, the latest one. So super important to do that. In global setting, what I normally recommend is your low latency, uh, uh, put it at on max frame rate. I like to lock my FPS at 237 FPS because I have a 240 Hertz monitor that I'm running G-Sync. So for example, if I'm running a game at 241, I'm going to lose the G-Sync on my monitor. So that's why I lock my FPS at 237. I always do minus three for my FPS. So for example, if you have a 144 Hertz monitor, lock at 141. Shader cache side, uh, by default, normally it's 5 gig, if I remember correctly, from NVIDIA. Uh, put 10 or 100 if you have the space on your disk drive. When you install a lot of different game, uh, you will always have to reconstruct your cache size if you don't have the space in your folder. Sometimes you're getting some corruption for, for, for your cache, stuttering, stuff like that. So it's always good to have more space for this one. In the system sec section, if you want to use your G-Sync, activate it. Select the screen that you want to activate it. Make sure also on your monitor, uh, your G-Sync is activate. In the display properties, uh, refresh rate, I recommend to go with your maximum. I know a lot of people, they are buying an high refresh rate monitor, but the, by default, it's at 60, 60 with Windows. So always use the maximum one and make sure that you're playing native with your resolution. For the color, if you have an HDR monitor or a monitor is compatible with 10 bits, make sure that you're selecting 10 bits. But again, Windows will push 8-bit by default and make sure that your dynamic range is at full. Also, I like to put a little bit of digital uh, vibrance. It's pretty much the same thing for saturation. I like to put five, plus 5. Uh, the ga game looks less gray and also you're getting a little bit more saturation to your color. 
The last one is your performance, so power maximum. I like to put it at max at 133. So you're going to put more wattage to your card. Boost clock are a little bit longer. So normally I can get 5 to 7% boost in my FPS. But you will need the space on your card. So, you know, the boost clock is based on an algorithm based from uh, NVIDIA. So if, for example, if you have bad thermal, uh, you're already at 82 degrees. It will not change anything. Just stay at 100. But if you know that you have the space on your card and all your uh, stats are pretty decent when you're playing a game, definitely go a little bit higher with your power maximum. That's about it for NVIDIA. So now let's go to Radian. So now for Radian card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of per person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver and also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So window mode, I really recommend to go with full screen. This is the mode with the best FPS and less input lag. Make sure that you're native in resolution. And I don't like to use vertical sync because it adds input lag in the game. You should use some like G-Sync or Free Sync to make sure that your GPU is synchronized with your monitor to remove those tearing lines. Uh, camera shake, I'm not a fan of this effect, so I just deactivate it. 
After that, we're going to upscaling technique. For sure, we're going to start with DLSS. This is pretty much the best option that you can have right now uh, if you have an NVIDIA card. So definitely quality or balance. Quality, you can expect 10% boost, balance 16. And honestly, balance is pretty good with DLSS 4. Balance is better than quality from DLSS 3. So that can be a, a good thing to, to use if uh, you want a nice image quality and also a good boost in your FPS. After that, you can force the preset K if you want, but you're already forcing it with the NVIDIA app. So if you're doing that, you don't need to do it this over there. After that, frame generation. Uh, on, in my case, I have a 4000 series, so I can do 2x. And honestly, I don't like it. I feel the uh, in input lag uh, in this game with the frame generation. So this is pretty much the last resort. I'm not a fan of it. And the reflex NVIDIA, put this one at on. If you have a Radeon card, uh, Intel, or even NVIDIA if you want, you have FSR 3.1. It's not that great. I recommend to go with quality. You're going to get 8% to 10% boost in your FPS, but it's it, it doesn't look good if you compare it with DLSS. My recommendation, honestly, I have a dedicated video that I just released. Look at it. You can force the XESS with DLSS Swapper, the new version, the 2.1. And at quality or even ultra quality, that it looks a lot better than FSR 3.1. And it will work for Radeon or Intel card. So definitely this one is a good add-on to the game. I hope they're going to push the frame generation because you can also do frame generation with XESS. And it's better than FSR 3.1. Now let's go to the settings. So if you're using an upscaling technique, your anti-aliasing will be grayed out. I like to put the background FPS at 30 because when you're alt-tab, you don't want to have crazy thermals. Global illumination, shadow, I recommend to go with medium with both. You can expect 12% boost in your FPS. If you're struggling to run the, the game, you're at currently 20, 25 FPS, go with low, you will have to do it. But the game looks flat uh, under medium. Anti-aliasing off and anyway, you're not running it. View distance, this one can be a tricky to run. Don't go far or epic, just run medium. And if you're struggling with your FPS, go with near. For the texture, if you have 6 gig and more on, on uh, your VRAM, on your GPU, go with epic. 4 gig high, 3 gig medium, less than 3 gig, go with low. Effect and reflection, those one, I really recommend to go with low if you want to stabilize your FPS. You can expect a nice 6% boost, but it's more about stabilizing your FPS. So definitely go with low for those one. Post-processing, I recommend to go with medium. And the last one, animation quality, you can run high easily, except if you have a rarely, rarely old uh, CPU. Uh, but normally, you should be fine with this preset. So this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question about the Titan Quest 2, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.